Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Wolfwalkers. Now, this is the latest film from uh, Cartoon Saloon and Tom Moore, who's directed most of Cartoon Saloon's films, but not all of them, and uh, co-directed by uh, Ross Stewart. And it is very similar to the other films he's directed, where it takes very Irish folklore-influenced uh, animated films. Wolfwalkers uh, falls right into that tradition. One of the things I really like about these films from Tom Moore is they take folklore that has been around for centuries and centuries and kind of represents it to a new generation making it almost like as impactful as clearly it was to him like making that folklore live on through these animated films and since animation is better at living on for decades and decades probably be able to exist much past that but wolfwalkers is really also about the idea of kind of tradition the idea of believing in kind of something bigger than yourself believing in not going with like the established way you're supposed to behave or think or whatever society is dictating to you and i think wolf Walkers does that really well in some ways this film is much more kind of modern animation in terms of like things like frozen it sort of actually reminded me of that a lot of what that film has to say about being yourself and not being constricted by how you feel like you should be minimized by society and so forth this film takes place in about the 1600s i believe when uh, Ireland is under English rule. This one girl, Robin, who is English, her hawk and her dad have moved to this English town to kind of hunt wolves because wolves are sort of taking over. There's woods all around this town and the wolves are kind of like making trouble and eating and eating livestock and things like that. Although we never see them do, but that's effectively, I think, what wolves did at that time, which was, you know, bad. He's there to uh, bring down the wolf population and she wants to hunt wolves too. And she keeps breaking out of the town to help him, even though he's like, it's very dangerous. And um, it is, you know probably dangerous to fight wolves but um she runs into a little girl who is a wolf walker is someone who can transform into a wolf while they're sleeping actually so it's kind of like their body's completely asleep and it's sort of like manifests a spirit that turns into a wolf it's actually kind of cool it's not like a werewolf it's like a different thing so because your body is just asleep or in a coma or something and then there's like a wolf and she uh, kind of gets bitten by this girl and then becomes a wolf walker herself and that obviously has conflicts because you know her dad like hunts wolves and stuff i like the kind of conflicts that this narrative kind of presents in itself because already you're getting the idea of that she um has aligned herself with something that she's grown up with always objecting that she has like a kind of newfound empathy for wolves that she's never had in her life before obviously because her dad hunts wolves so you know um she probably isn't <laughs> the greatest view of them and what that says about like acceptance and things like that which i think is great there's probably like a lot you can read into the fact that she turns into a wolf and her dad's objected to it much more understanding with that which i think also uh adds more weight to this folklore you can put in things like you know uh, lgbtq representation or how if you know you always grew up your parents hating gay people or hating a certain race suddenly if you kind of have more empathy for them and have a more understanding and have an actual experience with them then you're like oh my god not all these people are evil it's much more nuanced than that which i think is actually an important narrative for kids to learn which, which that's something i really like about this but it's also like tom moore I've always liked how he frames and tells stories. Um, I like Song of the Sea. Uh, we watch Puff and Rock regularly. He's really great at telling children's stories. I'd say Cartoon Saloon is probably one of the best uh, children's storytellers working in modern animation today. But also uh, the framing in this is really great. Like some of the action sequences. He does this three shot thing where he divides up the screen into like three different shots. It reminded me a lot of De Palma, which I didn't know that was a guy this guy even watched during, not that I didn't think he did, but I didn't really think about it until, <laughs> until this movie. And I'm like, oh my God, this is some De Palma stuff going on in here. It was cool. I mean, De Palma only usually used two, but I kind of got the sense of when he cut it and had like, you're having three shots going on at the same time, that kind of action. It definitely like really brought me in. I've seen animation try to do that in one shot. The How to Train Your Dragon films almost had like layers of action going on in one shot. But in this, it's like having the three different cameras it really brought me in i was just like i was like whoa there's like almost too much to look at and in a, a, a really good way especially his framing is just like gorgeous in this and especially the illustration but then when he used the illustration you you know this is a hand-drawn film and there's not a lot of that anymore but you really could see like the lines and the sketchiness to it sort of reminded me i've heard people call it the sketchy style the xerox style of disney films but this felt like very 
handmade you you got there were people and persons behind this drawing this and everything like that and it, it just had a such a lived-in quality it felt like homey but i don't mean that in, i mean that in a very great way um and he kept doing this thing with shadows behind each of the characters like when they were fighting sometimes when they're talking and it almost played like prince ahmed type of storytelling i know i'm just using the most popular term but uh that that kind of like the shadows behind them added an extra energy to it which i'm not i'm not exactly sure how i feel about it because sometimes i'm like are you just reusing something we're already seeing in the foreground but i really liked how the shadows kind of like this way of like seeing like maybe someone's soul like like effectively it looked like their souls were rising out of their bodies becoming wolves these wolf walkers and then when you see their shadows which you know your shadow sort of feels like in a sense not to get too spiritual or something but like your soul and you're seeing like the souls kind of arguing kind of added an extra element to it which i really like there's a lot of almost as many layers as he's playing with in the storytelling are in the actual animation itself and what you can see on screen which shows you how smart of a filmmaker tom moore and cartoon saloon are because they do add those elements to them and it just like the framing and just uh, on a technical level this is one of the most impressive animated films i've seen this year and in a while because it just adds so much there you can read into just in the images like just being able to see like three images at once or being able to see like kind of a map of the town you constantly get a landscape and know the geography geography in films especially in action films or any film if you know the geography and you get the sense of like how she's trapped in the town how she's free like in the town you kind of get the geography of it because it's stale and it's boring and you know where your house is and like who cares at a certain point i'm not in the film but like how you naturally feel about your hometown like you don't even think about turning on that street or something and then when you go out it feels like so much more alive but you also sort of know where stuff is and so it's like you get that regular familiarity and so you can like naturally understand like how she knew how to go back to the cave, how she knew how to go back to the house, how you knew that guy was going to be like hung up there as she passed him by every day. It's really smart, like very simple stuff. I like the character design. This was co-directed by Ross Stewart, who did character designs for Paranorman, but he mostly works at Cartoon Saloon, worked on animation and Song of Sea and uh, Secret of Kells as well. But I don't know him as well. I'm probably, I might be giving too much. Uh, faith to Tom Moore because I thought the I like the character designs in this. I probably like them even more. This might, and I don't want to say this because it's such a big thing to say, but this might be my favorite cartoon saloon film. But I know there's one I haven't seen. The one that's not directed by Tom Moore, so um, that's not a really intelligent, <laughs> smart thing. And it's been a while since I've seen Call, so this isn't ranking. But that's how I felt. I felt like this was very positive. I felt it was really great. I'm actually excited to show this to people. I saw it early and I kind of just wanted to watch it by myself because i knew if i showed it to my daughter she wanted to see it again i go oh can't wait to show you in december so i <laughs> i didn't uh but but i i can tell you i was really enthusiastic about it and um i really liked the kind of story it was telling and um i think what cartoon saloon is good at is both showing the kind of future of other folklore and other storytelling and how we can make that relevant to kids today but also like this is still very much Irish folklore. It's not trying to, you know, dress it up and like being in the future. Like this is like a period piece, but he doesn't direct it like that. Like they don't think about that when you're watching the film. Like I knew it's very much not trying to hide that at all. It very much is, but it's just not done like kind of the stodgy, like, you know, the cameras here, here's a beautiful shot. It's very alive in its kind of autorism in terms of animation and its storytelling. And I, I just love that about it because it makes you want to revisit the story over and over again. And I think that's one of the things about animation, especially through children's entertainment, that these things do get watched over and over again. But there's like there's like a feast in there. There's like things to dig into with this movie, which I, I, I really liked. And I like the idea of understanding the empathy of your own enemy, which I think is something we don't talk enough about, uh, particularly when we're, you know, teaching a story to kids. And I, I'm not trying to minimize this thing it's just a children's story i i think in terms of filmmaking there's just so much there really in all the cinematography and the animation but i also just love just seeing the the, the pencil lines in this and seeing you know the beautifulness in that and liking like you know a strong film about female friendship and how a great friendship can change your perspective on something just a really great story i think uh wolf walkers is definitely something that i think has probably more going on with it then you could probably even appreciate it on the first viewing. I'm actually really excited to watch this again, to be honest with you. I, I quite enjoyed it. And I, I, I think because there is so much there and there's so much thought and care into everything they're doing, 
and in ways that I don't think many animated films want to be as loose as this was. To go from the three shots or even having two shots in one frame, caring about the framing, you know, showing a map, like it almost doesn't care about like the consistency in shots. And, and I don't mean that in a disrespect. I mean the consistency and it's able to be experimental, but you almost don't think about it. That's a sign of a really great director um, because if you're able to be weirder and experimental and when you're watching this, you're mainly thinking about how there's wolves in it and you know there's this fighting and stuff and all that stuff that, and you don't even think about it that's genius right there because it's one thing to present and be over over you know talk about how you did these different kind of shots that probably shouldn't work but they did and whatever but it's another thing to do that and nobody talks about it and i think you know like doing a big map shot or something that's like completely like disney would never do that like a normal big animation studio is not that daring but tom moore is or doing the three shots in there constantly you know and sometimes he does them in different ways like you get like the middle is like the main action and the other two cameras are a different action it's just oh i just really great use of camera and framing in this and really great use of storytelling within animation and um i just really found this film to be kind of just a really rich experience you know <laughs> i think what wolf walkers is kind of doing is just like giving so much love to kind of this kind of storytelling and storytelling in general it is kind of infectious it makes you love this kind of storytelling and makes you love the idea of the different views of storytelling it just shows you like maybe in a lot of ways what a great storyteller and what a great filmmaker and animator can really do when they're able to kind of let loose in such a way and i think that's one of the things about wolf walkers is you see these little girls kind of like show their real personalities through being wolves and in a way you also get to see these filmmakers and cartoon saloon and tom moore show their full personalities by telling this story so if you have seen Wolf Walkers and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.